Hello everyone, I am back with a new recipe and what I am making today is a carrot sweet potato soup. I think it's a perfect dish for these cooler winter days and I love sweet potatoes so I find any way I can to use them. And this is a great recipe, it's going to have to be done in a I guess maybe shifts because you do want to caramelize your onions. Now, I don't know if you, you can probably see that in there. What I've been doing, see, like, there you go. What I've been doing is I've been caramelizing these onions now for a good, I would say, five minutes. And I just have them on low. I have them at about a two to three on my dial for my stove. And I've just been cooking them slowly. You don't want to burn them, but you do want to brown them. You do want them to be caramelized. Those onions have a lot of sugar in them. And when they release that sugar, the, they will start to brown and caramelize. And they become really, really sweet. So my camera is just not behaving today again. And hopefully we don't have painting cameras today. I'm going to do everything in my power not to have that. I can't guarantee the barking dog because she barks at her shadow. And um, but we'll see if we can make it without any mishaps today. Um, I know that, that video the other day with my clams, it was just like one thing after another. It was like, oh my goodness. All right, so these are caramelizing really good. I mean, you can really just see how those are coming together really, really well. Browning, not burning, they're not black, they're not charred. They're just a nice golden brown, and that's what you want. This is going to take a good 10 to 15 minutes for you to get this. I have them sauteing in coconut oil, and I do use the unrefined coconut oil and the reason I use that is because that does have a very nice coconut flavor plus it's less processed and if you know me you know that I do the least amount of processed food that I can and so I go with um, anything that is the least amount of processed and so that would be the least amount the, un the unrefined and if you open it up and it smells like coconut you have the right kind um, if you don't like coconut taste, you don't have to use the coconut oil. You could do uh, grass-fed, I would say 100% grass-fed butter. I'm going to turn these off because I don't want them to burn. I just want them to caramelize and they are really, they're getting just about perfect. So I'm probably going to turn these off a little bit because I'm going to move you over and I'll continue talking a little bit about that, but I need to cut up my sweet potatoes and my ginger. So I'm going to turn you off while I, while I move you over. Okay, so I am I am back, and I have my sweet potatoes here. Like I said, I love sweet potatoes, and they're oh they're so good for you. They are so much better for you than a white potato. They have a lot more nutrients. Anytime you have a vegetable that has color in it, you know it's full of, of nutrients. So I am going to cut these really small because I want them to cook up fast. And this soup is going to be a blended soup, so it doesn't matter how big or small you cut it. So I do like cutting them smaller, just so that they cook up a little bit faster. I'm going to be adding these to my onions in my pan. I did take those off of the heat so that they would stop caramelizing, because I don't want them burnt. I just want them caramelized. So we're going to go for, hopefully... We're going to get about, cut that little piece off there, about four cups of our sweet potato. So we'll see how, how much sweet potato we have here. And I like adding a carrot to my sweet potato soup. Again, for the extra nutrients, but also just for a little bit of extra sweetness. I think it does add a little bit of sweetness to your soup without having to add any type of sweetener. And you do want to make sure you try to get all your cuts about the same size because everything will cook more evenly that way. And... It's so much easier when everything is done at the same time. So I want to talk a little bit about um, ginger also, because oh, as we are going to be surprised she didn't hear that. Usually if I go oops, I have someone right next to my 
leg here looking to see what I dropped on the floor. But I highly doubt she would eat a sweet potato. <laughs> I know my dog pretty well. She eats just about anything, but I think she draws a line at, at, at sweet potatoes. And we are going to have just about four cups here. I do, didn't do a very good job of uh, peeling my sweet potato here. I'm going to just kind of get some of those brown pieces off. Sure, they'd be fine to use, but I just want to make sure I got all, all good vegetables in there. So, like I said, just make sure you cut everything up nice and evenly. We're going to throw this into our pan with our onions. And we're going to saute this for about another five minutes. Just so that the sugars in your sweet potato will start to also caramelize with your onions. So I have my measuring cup, or measuring cup here. So I'm going to throw those in. I just threw them right in my pan. And I'm going to turn this back on the heat and we're going to start cooking this again. Give it a good toss. Now your ginger. And we are going to want two tablespoons of ginger. And ginger is a really funny looking spice when you go to buy it in the store fresh. And I always buy my ginger fresh because I think it tastes a lot better. And there's a really easy way, I forgot to grab a spoon, easy way of peeling your ginger. Now you could use a vegetable peeler if you wanted, but your ginger is really, it's got all kinds of nooks and crannies in there. It's um, different shapes. It's got little knobs, it's a, it's not an easy vet or spice to peel. So all you have to do is take the back of a spoon and just gently rub that ginger. And you can see how that just really comes, comes off. That skin just peels right off. And what I like about using this method is if you wanted to get into these little nooks and crannies, this one's going to be really hard to get into, so I'm just going to take that piece off. Um, if you wanted, if you had a bigger piece of ginger and you had a bigger nook, you know, like right here, you can really dig in there and get that. And then it breaks on me. Like I said, live TV. All right. So we're just going to move that over there. I am probably going to be using all this ginger. So it might seem like a lot of ginger, but it's we're making a lot of soup here. This soup will probably serve, I would say, six to eight people. So this is going to be a big soup. I'm just going to freeze it when I get done with it because it's going to be more than I need. And it'll be a good meal when I want something fast and easy. I can hear my uh, sweet potatoes cooking over there. So this is, you know, a little bit tedious, but it's so worth it. So, so worth it. And you do want to crush up your ginger um, fine when you do this. I have, this is all going in my blender. It's going it's to be pulverized to a cream soup so I don't have to worry about using my microplane today and doing my ginger that way. I'm going to just cut it up because it's not, I really don't need my uh, gigantic knife here for that either. So I just, I'm just going to cut it up very small because it doesn't matter if it's a little bit chunky it's going to be all blended anyways. And you want about, like I said, about two tablespoons of your ginger in there. Oh, there's nothing better than the smell of fresh ginger. Mm -mm -mm. Whenever you can use fresh versus dried, um, go for it. I'm not going to have enough ginger here. I only have a tablespoon. So, that makes me sad. I thought I picked up a big big enough chunk at the store, but I guess I didn't. It's actually, you know what, if I was to really measure that correctly, there's my one tablespoon. There, I dropped a piece of sweet potato. Let's see if she eats it. I don't think she will. She's like, yeah, right, lady. <laughs> I can eat that. <laughs> I had about one and a half tablespoons. Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright. So 
So let's move you guys over because I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. All right, so I have my potatoes in there with my onions. And I'm only going to give them a good five minutes, not even, probably not even five minutes. My onions kept cooking a little bit after I took them off the stove. So they're getting a little bit more brown than what I would like them to be. So um, I think I'm gonna not brown these onions any more than I already have them brown. But I have my ginger in there. Oh my goodness. If you guys could smell this. I hope you make the soup so that you can smell this. Cause this is awesome. All right, I'm gonna go get my carrots and add those in quickly. Okay, I have my carrots in here. I just had two carrots that I peeled and cut up to two good sized carrots. I didn't even measure how much that was, but just two carrots. Whatever size carrots you have is fine. That's the beauty of soups. You know, you don't really have to have exact measurements. It, does, it, it doesn't always really matter. So I'm just going to saute these a little bit. I can see that my uh, sweet potatoes are already starting to brown a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to be adding to this is two cups of vegetable broth. So I have my vegetable broth. I started measuring that already. So there's one and two. And now we're just going to let this simmer. We're just going to let this simmer until those veggies are nice and tender. If you didn't want to, I don't know if I said this before or not, but if you did not want to saute those onions to caramelize them, if you wanted to skip that step, you certainly could. It's There's nothing wrong with just maybe sauteing your onions until they're translucent, you know, if you were in a hurry and you didn't have that 15 minutes to wait. But I'll tell you, I think doing that and getting those onions caramelized adds such a good rich depth flavor to this soup that I think you're, you're not going to want to skip that step. So if you have the time, Definitely caramelize those onions. You'll see what a nice deep broth I already have going on here. Even with just the vegetable stock. I mean, it's it's nice and rich. And that's just from all that caramelization from those onions. So this is going to have to cook now for a good, oh, I would say it's going to have to cook for a good 15 minutes to get those vegetables uh, nice and tender. It really depends how fine you cut up your vegetables. So the fast, the finer you cut them up, the faster they're going to cook. So, you know, if you want, if you're in a hurry again, you can just really speed up the process by really cutting those vegetables up really fine. And let's see here. I'm looking for my coconut milk because we are adding coconut milk to this. And I highly recommend getting, you yeah, really need to see that cook, getting full fat coconut milk. I think it has a lot better flavor than the, the light. And in a soup like this, you want the cream, creaminess of the coconut milk. This is what's gonna give it the nice rich creamy, creaminess of your, um, your soup. There's another ingredient that I also put in here and you'll see me do that when I put it into the blender is white beans. Now you might be going, ah, beans in my soup? But really, you won't taste them. They really, they do not have any flavor when they go into the soup. But it gives that soup a nice hearty depth and also an extra creaminess. Um, so between the coconut milk and those white beans I'm going to be adding in. And like I said, I'll show you that when we get to that point. But I want to kind of show you, and I'm hoping this is full fat. It is. It didn't say full fat on the carton. Oh, maybe it's not. Nope, it's not. It's light. If this was full fat, it would have a thick layer of coconut cream on the top. And I didn't think it was because I know my little grocery store in town does not carry full fat um, coconut milk. But I, I thought for sure. It didn't say light, so I was hoping that it was full fat. But uh, let me see here. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not full fat at all. I'm still going to stir it up a little bit, but that's all you would have to do. And there'll be another video, I'm sure, that I'll be using coconut milk that I can show you this. But like I said, it has a nice thick layer of coconut cream. And all you have to do is I just take my, my little whisk and I will whisk that all to incorporate that cream back into the coconut milk. It's 
it's great. So this will work good. I'm kind of glad I'm adding the beans to my soup now since I didn't have the full fat coconut milk. So if you don't, you know, you don't have to have the full fat coconut milk. I just think it adds a little more depth to, to it than the light. So if you prefer to, to do the light coconut milk or that's all that you can find, it's fine to use. That's all I could find. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera off. This really just it needs to cook for about 15 minutes, and I don't have enough to say for 15 minutes. So <laughs> I'm going to turn this off. Once this gets cooked down and nice and soft, I will turn the camera back on. Hopefully my camera can hold a 15 minute pause. We'll find out. And we'll move it, everything over to the blender and I'll show you the final step on this. I will be back. Okay, while that is cooking away on my stove and it's just about done. So, yay. My phone kept a kept a uh, char or pause. This is the parsley I bought the other day. Remember I, I put my little greenhouse bag over it? Look how nice that steam. Look how nice and fresh that is. So yeah, this that really does work. Give that a try. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of parsley. I'm not gonna use a lot because I'm just gonna sprinkle this on the top. So I'm just gonna cut this up real fine. I don't want real big chunks of parsley. That just adds a little bit of color to your soup. Again, I'm not going to use the uh, stems because I don't want that, so I'm just going to leave that right there. I do have about a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm going to add that to my soup as well, as well as my coconut milk that I have here and about a cup of my beans. Now, as far as the beans are concerned, I did rinse them. I took them out of the can and I rinsed them. And I use the cannellini beans, or the, I, another name for them, I believe, is northern white beans. Let's see. I'm pretty sure that's what white kidney beans, but they're, they're called cannellini beans, too. So that's what I call them. But I think they're called white northern beans, too. So kind of look for those three things. Um, any bean will work, really. I would stay away from your red kidney beans. I don't think that would be a really good option to use. Um, garbanzo beans. I would say maybe not on those either, just because they're a little bit firmer. These are these are nice and soft and tender, so that's why I like to go with these. So I'm going to move everything over. I'm going to put my soup into my blender. Now there are a few things that you want to really watch for when you are doing this. Remember, you are using very hot liquids, so you do not want any splattering. You don't want any. You want to be very careful. You don't want to burn yourself. And it's easy to do if you are not very careful. So, this is an important step. Just, you don't want to just pour it into your blender. I always just scoop it in. Alright, so it's been cooking here. And that was like really stuck on there. And I'm going to get my... Look how nice that looks. Yum. Scoop this in gently because you can see how hot this is. This is very hot. Now, once I get all the solids in there, I can add a little bit of that liquid without worrying too much about splattering. So you get all that goodness in there. Yum. Okay. So, there's our soup. Now you want to add a little bit of your coconut milk and I always save a little bit for the end but I don't think I'm going to probably do that today just because this isn't the full fat and it's pretty thin. So I think I'm just going to add it all in. We'll see. We'll add a little bit. We'll see if we can get it to... I like to make a little swirl. So we'll see if we can get it to work. I'll save a little bit all just in case. Got my one cup of beans in there and then now with your blender I have a good blender here. I have a Vitamix. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your lid is on all the way. This is another step that you have to be very careful with. And then you don't want to, you see how I left the top 
open there, you want to leave that open because you need it to vent. If you didn't do that and you put this on the base and you turned it on, it would not, you would have spruing hot liquid all over the place, which is what you do not want. So um, leave that vent open. You're going to cover it with a towel so that, let's see if we can get this to work a little bit better. Oh, you almost had a painting camera there. Promised you I wasn't going to do that today. All right, I almost need like a step stool. One of, one of the downfalls of being a short Italian. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my towel and I'm going to put that on top. Let me get this to, there you go. I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to hold that on. Now I'm not going to turn this on high by any means. I'm going to turn this on very low to start with. And just hold on to that. Make sure you have it. You have to put two towels up there. And then I'm slowly just going to increase that. Turn this off so I can add my see the steam coming out of there that's hot I'm gonna add my salt and pepper into there then I'm gonna start it on low and I'm gonna very gradually turn it up Take this off. You can, you can see I had got a little bit up there. So you really want to make sure you have a good towel up there. You can see the steam. It's very, very hot yet. But look how pretty is that soup. I am going to taste this because I want to make sure that it tastes good. Um, make sure it doesn't need any more seasoning. So just be careful when you do that too because it's it's hot. Oh, oh, that is good. That is mm, mm, mm. very, very good. So we are going to pour this into our bowl. Oh, wow, that's good. Now another spice that you can add to this, you can add a little bit of curry to this. You could add, um, oh, just, you know, cumin. If you wanted more of a Mexican sweet potato soup, you could do that. I'm just trying to get this so you can see. There we go. All right, so we're going to add that to our bowl. Yum, look how thick and smooth that is. Wow, this is, this is an awesome soup, people. Mm. Okay, and then we're gonna see if we can get this to work. I can't guarantee it because the soup is, or the milk is a little thin, but I like just to kind of do a little swirl of my, coconut milk and it makes it a little prettier and then some of our I always say you eat with your eyes and some of our parsley on top of that yum oh I'm gonna go have a nice hot bowl of soup the rest of this freezes amazingly so you can freeze it pull it out when you need a quick meal and it's very good if you wanted to you could add chicken to this if you wanted a meat with it. I like it just the way it is. If you wanted protein with your, and you're getting the protein with your beans, but if you wanted extra protein, you, I would just cook chicken up ahead on the side, you know, and have your protein on the side. But by all means, if you like chicken in your soups, go ahead and make this a chicken potato, sweet, sweet potato carrot soup. Have an amazing day. This is Sunshine in the Bowl. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.